Hey guys, I'm Paul. Today we're going to be talking to Bryony Moss. Also with us uh, is Chantel. How are you doing, Chantel? I'm doing really well today. Thanks, Paul. Good to How have you? you here. Okay, so Bryony is from um, Buckinghamshire. Bryony has cerebral palsy. Welcome, Bryony. It's lovely to have you. Thanks for having me. Uh, you, you, it's a pleasure. Okay, so cerebral palsy is the name for a group of lifelong conditions that affects movement and coordination. Yeah. Um, it's caused by a problem with the brain that develops before, during, or soon after birth. Can you just explain um, that to us a little bit, please? Um, so I'm adopted. Um, so we're not actually sure when um, the cerebral palsy happened, whether it was during um, birth, after birth. I found out that I had cerebral palsy, well, my family found out I had cerebral palsy when I was about in year two, because the teacher could see that I wasn't quite like the other kids with um, learning and PE with coordination, and I wasn't ready to kicking footballs and things like that so yeah that's when my mum started to take me to the hospital quite a bit had you had trouble forming um friendships at, at, as well before I was diagnosed I I did have more friends and then when they found out that I was going to the hospital and I was like yeah I've, I have a, a, I'm not very well sort of thing because I wasn't really sure what it was um Friends sort of started to drift apart, and that's when bullying started, really. Did it take long to diagnose? That took a bit of time because then I was di well, diagnosed, but from that I had walking difficulties, so then I was given splints and stuff as well. So to get a full diagnosis did take quite a bit of time because I had to see different doctors. and The things that you're able to do, have they improved? The having the splints and doing the physiotherapy and the conductive education has helped. My mum even thinks that I wouldn't be able to do half the stuff I do now if I hadn't done it. So mm. even though it was a bit annoying and I didn't really want to be there after school, it has definitely helped. But due to bullying at school, I then developed mental health problems. How are things now, Bryony? You know, um, they're, much, they're much, much better. I mean... I feel that, like, because you're not in school, you can hang out with people that, like, understand you more and you don't have to, like, try and fit in and and be in a group because I found that very difficult because not, not really... Groups didn't really want to take me because they didn't want someone with a disability with them. So, yeah, yeah that, that's been hard. But I, I now, like, go to a theatre... I go to a theatre group. And I have lots of friends there and they've got disabilities, yeah. but then I've also got able-bodied friends from um, school as well that I've managed to keep in contact with. So. Do you find that with your age and getting older, you've sort of worked out some sort of coping mechanisms or, or kind of, you know, have you managed to deal with it in a, in a, in a more, um, in a better way? I definitely use coping strategies because... I find it really hard talking to new people. I find that really nerve-wracking sometimes. But I think through seeing doctors and doctors and other specialists, I've been able to use uh, mindfulness and different types of tools to try and help mm. me to stay calm because of my anxiety. I couldn't help but pick up on the fact that you mentioned that you were adopted. Can you just touch on a little bit on what your parents mean to you? Oh, God. No. Um, my mum she's literally been well she's like a rock to me no. she'd hate me to say it because she's like I'm your mum not your friend but she's like a friend to me as well Lovely. Um, my dad he's um, because he was working a lot abroad when I was getting diagnosed and stuff um, I, I did see him I did talk to him and stuff but now he works from home so our bonds has definitely got like better, bigger, brighter. Sometimes I forget I'm adopted because my, both my parents are um, Caucasians because yeah. my dad's working in India, so they live there. But they've got me. They're like, oh, why do you have, why do you have like English parents? And I'm like, what? Oh. And then I remember, and I'm like, oh, I'm adopted. Yeah. So tell us about your interest. You sent me a video of you walking a a little miniature pony, and I thought that was lovely. So um, that's my miniature horse, Lola. 
um i did recently get her only like just before christmas i want to say october november time but horses have been a massive part of my life and that really helped me through my mental health and my bullying because it was a place where i could just be myself yeah. and wouldn't didn't feel judged and it was like a safe place yeah also have goats so i like looking after my goats as well <laughs> <laughs> do you live on a farm no but i'm kind of making a farm by accident uh you said that you're it you you're in a uh, drama group or it's acting yes yeah group so with your uh, learning disabilities how do you um how do you approach learning lines the theatre company is called the theatre show and it's an inclusive theatre company and um, there's quite a lot of us with disabilities so they have mentors that will help us to learn our lines in different ways so some of us have to get like have a bit of memory loss so they come on stage with us and just prompt us What's a typical day like for you? My mum's my carer and my dad helps my mum, but I also have a, a support worker who comes with me wherever I go. So she'll come to college with me, she'll come uh, horse riding. She knows about my seizures and like she can tell when I'm in them, what to do when I'm in them. Because sometimes I forget where I am and who I am and I sort of make up these stories in my head. So oh. she's there to like keep me safe, but she's also there because... I can, even though I can't be completely independent, like I can't drive, like some of my friends can, like my sister can, It's she's helping me to be as independent as I can be. This is um, somebody who is with you five days a week or? Six days a week. But that enables you to have independence from your yeah. home and from your parents. Yeah, and also it lets me do stuff that like I want to do rather than like fitting it around my mum because there's stuff that I like doing and she's like, I don't really want to do that. What type of seizures do you have? Uh, I have non-epileptic seizures, but they look like an epileptic seizure. So is it like tonic-clonic where you fall to the ground? Okay, yeah, I can have those, yeah. The doctors don't actually know much about non-epileptic seizures, mm. but what they think is, is that it's driven from uh, trauma, anxiety. Would you say that your anxiety is triggered by your your condition your condition is this something that they go they go very much hand in hand so by having cerebral palsy that is something that has contributed to making you feel more anxious or is it the bullying what what is it you know what is it that's kind of triggered that anxiety i think that anxiety is it's from the disability but it's from how others see it and the experiences i've had with the bullying can i ask you how you um, Bryony, how you deal with anxiety? I've got better at talking to people about it and saying to people, I'm a bit anxious, or um, I, I do have panic attacks sometimes, so that's another way of me mm. knowing that something's making me anxious. Um, another thing I like to do is just go take my dog for a walk. What needs to change, in your opinion, for for um, in terms of how your conditions are perceived and, and seen? Our disability doesn't define us. Like I wouldn't say, oh, I'm Bryony, hi, I'm Bryony, I'm disabled. That would come way later. I'd be like, oh, I'm Bryony, I like this, I like that. I go here, I enjoy this. Oh, and yeah, just let you know I have a disability, just so you, yeah. How did you learn about the sunflower? When did you first find out about it? Um, I first found out about it, I'd say at the beginning of the first lockdown, because I couldn't wear a mask because of my seizures and people couldn't see if I was going into one. And my friend was wearing a sunflower lanyard and I said, oh, what's that? And she was like, oh, you know, like people with hidden disabilities, they can wear this and it tells people. And then I thought, OK, I'm going to do some research. I got myself one of these, saw all the amazing stuff you guys do, looked you up on Instagram, all that. And then I was like, wow. And then the more people asked me about this, I then met more people that wore these and it became like a community of us all together. Do you find it genuinely helpful to have one with you? I think they're really important. I think through COVID, I've learned that they are important, but I feel that even though we're still in the pandemic, but 
in the years to come, these will become even more important. If you have any advice for somebody like you who um, is perhaps getting bullied or has got unanswered questions, what would you suggest to them? What would you say to them? So I would say that you aren't alone, but if you are struggling, if you find it hard to speak to a friend or a family member, there are charities out there and organisations out there that you can ring that will help you. It won't show up on your phone bill. It's very uh, discreet. So like Samaritans, Charles Lyon, things like that. Mm. Um, they can actually be really helpful. And sometimes it's just nice to talk to someone. You've mentioned Childline and the Samaritans. Were there any charities that helped you with, this, with the cerebral palsy? I found out about a charity called CP Teens, which okay. is all about um, for disabled people with um, cerebral palsy, they can all meet up. So it's like a, net, a help network. You are a very inspiring young woman and um, incredibly busy as well with all your looking after all your animals, your goats and your horse and your dog or pony rather, um, and your acting career uh, and going to college. So you've really got a lot going on and um, we've really enjoyed this. So thank you very much. Paul and I wish you all the best for uh, the future and please keep in touch with us and let us know how everything is going.